G'day there, you're watching the Aussie BIM Guru, and today we're running through the first demonstration of Lesson 8 of my Learn Dynamo series. Um, so there's one of two demonstrations that we'll be doing in relation to family types and instances, uh, so two demonstrations. Uh, originally we looked at how to manage family types and also place family instances, but we didn't do any demonstrations, so we're going to put that in practice uh, in this session. So we're going to solve a real problem. Um, a common issue that I came across when I first started working was people that used other programs besides Revit and expect uh, their drawings to be turned into Revit models quite quickly, um, which is one thing Dynamo is really good at doing. So we're going to just use an example where we say that someone gives you a set of lines, some blocks for doors and windows, and says, I want to make this into a house in Revit. And we're going to try and script uh, an example of this. Um, so we're going to look at generating floors and walls from lines, and then also generating doors and windows from fills, uh, which represent blocks. So we'll go straight to Dynamo. Um, so we've got a Revit model where we've got a couple of styles of lines, one for floor edge and one for wall centerline. And then we have some fills. So we have one fill type for doors and one fill type for windows. So we're essentially going to turn this into a floor plan over a few stages. And we could build one script to do everything, but instead I'm going to do it in steps. So I'm going to do the floors first, then the walls, then the doors, then the windows. So we're just going to take a toolbox of nodes to work with. Um, I'm just going to ungroup these. So we're going to start with all elements in our active view, which is that floor plan. And we're going to get their, their line style parameter. So we're just going to feed in line style. Important to make sure spelling is correct with your parameter names. And ideally that should give us a bunch of graphic styles for those elements. Some elements may return a null if they're not a 2D element with a line style, but in this case, everything in the view has a graphic style. From there, we just want to get the name of that style. So you'll see we've got some that are called floor edge and some that are called wall center line. And what we're going to do then is we're going to take a line style dropdown node. So line styles. Um, all these nodes can be found by just right clicking and searching for the names of them. You'll see, there we go, there's line styles. And we're going to get the element name of that line style as a string. And we're basically going to run an equals comparison to find out which of those are equal. We're going to do floors first. So we're just going to pick our floor edge line style. And we should expect a list of trues and falses that should be able to filter out all of our non-floor, non-floor, uh, sorry, non-wall edges in this case. We're then going to use a filter by Boolean mask to take all those elements and mask them so that all our elements should be filtered down to just the floors. There you go. You can see we've got two lists. And then we want to turn those into detailed curves, which are basically curves that Dynamo can work with. If we run that, and there you go. We see that in Dynamo now we have the curves of that floor. So already you can see quite a, an intelligent workflow um, that's come out of that. We're just going to move this off to the side and group these together uh, because we're going to use this for walls as well. Okay, so now we're going to, we're not going to do roofs in this session, but if you were going to generate roofs, these were the nodes that you would use. So you'd get your roof type, you'd generate the outline by level, um, but you'd have to use a poly curve as the input for the outline but we're going to sort of ignore roofs of this session because um, they're a bit more limited. Um, now we're going to look at the toolbox for floors, which is really just two nodes. Um, floors are nice and easy. So we're going to use floor by outline type and level. So as you can guess, we're going to need a few things for this. We're going to need a floor type and we're also going to need a level. So we want to place this at ground floor and we want the floor type to be floor one. And all you have to do is feed these in. And from there, we should be able to feed our curves in as well. Um, you could run some checks to make sure that they're closed curves by running a poly curve. So poly curves by join curves. And you can add a tolerance. So if you know that you know it should be within at least 50 mil, you can add a join tolerance of 50, for example. So now we should expect when we run this to generate a floor out of this. So we'll just go to our Revit model. And we'll just watch our model and see what happens. And we might just go to shaded mode. Okay, so we'll run this. And there you go. Just like that, we've generated a floor. So that's how easy it is to do that. What we're going to do is just freeze freeze this node. And just put it off to the side. Because the next thing we're going to do is generate walls. So the walls are all centered 
well, they offset 100 mil from the edge, and then the center line is what we're drawing upon. I'm just going to turn off shader because that's quite loud to look at. Okay, that's better. Cool. So now we want to add walls for all of these. So again, similarly, we're going to take this package of nodes that we built, but instead we're going to search for the line style of wall center line. So you can see how flexible this script is. I like to build scripts to do multiple things. And we're going to take these nodes. Now we have a couple of options for how we can generate our walls. Um, we can either do it by height and level. So uh, basically an unconnected height. Uh, but in this case, we're going to go by two levels. So we're just going to go from floor up to roof. So we're going to take, take those curves, I believe. I'll just double check that this should work. Yes. Okay. So we're going to take our curves. We're going to take a start level and we're just going to do, sorry, not the floor type. We're just going to do levels and we're going to take ground as our start and roof as our finish. And for wall types, we're just going to use a 200 millimeter wall that I've generated in the model. Um, and again, uh, this should be as simple as just pressing run and you'll see the walls show up. And there you go. So now we have a full set of walls. So if I just go into 3D in my project, you'll see that currently we generated floors and walls in this project. Um, so that's the levels there. So already you can see a relatively efficient workflow. Um, this could also be packaged into one script. Um, if you built uh, multiple copies of this section of the node, um, you can see we got a warning in this one because I believe that it failed to collect some element, element parameters for line style. You recall that I mentioned that there was going to be some empty cells um, in which case it doesn't matter because the boolean will get rid of those those nulls anyway because they won't meet the equals condition. Um, but obviously if you ran this script you would get a warning so you might panic if you see that for example. So just be mindful of that. So we're just going to freeze down our wall generation as well. Um, the next step is a, a little bit harder. So we're going to generate doors and windows. We'll do um, doors first because the generation method is quite similar. So really our node that we're aiming for here is in a package called springs and the node is called hosted instances by points so it more or less creates an element that relies on a host um, with a point now the hard part with this script is that it, you need to tell the script how to find its host so you'll need to actually get the wall that it needs to belong to you can't just place the element at the point and hope that it hosts to that particular element the point is quite easy um, so we'll do that part at least um, so we'll just take these nodes and we're just going to do a field region type. So we'll get the field region type. And let's just start with our, our door type. And we're going to have to use another, another node from Springs, which I think is called element type instances. And this will basically allow you to feed it in any type and it will find all the instances of that type. So if I run that, You'll see that we end up with all the field regions of doors. And if we did window, for example, um, conversely, we would end up with those instead. We're then gonna need a node from the Archilab package. We're first gonna flatten this list just because it comes out uh, at one level higher than we'd like. And we're gonna take a package, uh, sorry, a node from the Archilab package to get the boundary curves of a field region there's a couple of packages that can do this, but Revit by default doesn't come with this node. And if we run that, we expect that we'll see the boundaries of all of those respective field regions. From there, we're gonna basically turn these curves into poly curves so that they're closed. Um, so we're gonna join, join the poly curves by join curves. Um, some of these nodes you may not have seen me use yet. Um, I will be running a geometry tutorial after this one. So hopefully you'll see some of these techniques again in use there. And what we can do is actually turn off the preview for those because now our preview can become the poly curves instead. And you'll see the poly curves just become a join of all those elements. And what we want to do is create a closed surface um, so that we can find the center point of them. So we're just going to do a curve, uh, curve patch. And a patch basically closes a curve into a surface. So now if we rerun that again, we'll end up with small solid faces there. And we can actually take a, what's called a surface parameter at point. So which, which basically says, uh, we want to find the point at a particular position on the UV map of this surface. And we want to find it halfway 
along the UV. So we'll just put in a value of 0.5 and we should expect to get the point at the center of each of these. So you can see in our geometry display, that's what we're ultimately getting. We're getting the surfaces, but we're also getting their center point. So we essentially have two, two outputs available there. But what we really want is this point because we're gonna check which of these intersect which walls. So we'll just take We'll just take that row and just package it so that we have have it available. But now what we need to do is take all the walls that we have and generate geometry from them. So we're just gonna go category by name and we'll just get the category of walls. And this should let us get all elements of that category. You may want to filter down which um, which walls you're getting, depending on how resolute your project is. Obviously, the only walls in my project currently are the the main walls we've created. So in this case, I can just get all walls with confidence. Okay, um, so this at this point should retrieve all the walls that we've created in our project. But what I want to do here is get their geometry. And this will actually bake them into the Dynamo environment as form. And you may recall that node from our last session. But what I want to do is find out which fills intersect which walls. And this will ultimately let me find out which element they should be hosted to when they generate a door or a window. So we're going to do a, a list map and we're going to check if they intersect in the list map. And the reason we're using a list map is we run it. We want to run it for each respective uh, filled region. We're going to flatten this first as well because the, the, the lacing isn't ideal. Um, just so that they're all in one big list. Okay, so we're going to feed this in and map this function to check if they intersect with any of the walls. We expect that every fill should have at least one intersect in each list. Uh, in this case, we're getting a, a false, which is interesting. What I may do instead, because uh, this is the point we're going to host, I might actually bake this patch into a solid. So we're gonna do a offset or a thicken. And we're gonna thicken these surfaces just a little bit so that we can definitely have something that will intersect with these the wall geometry. And instead, we're gonna feed in, uh, we're gonna feed this into the list map. And this should essentially definitely cause an intersection. The points mustn't be intersecting because they're right on the edge of the walls geometry is my guess. But we'll try that anyway. So we'll take those later. But for now, let's see if we get any trues in these lists. There we go. So we have trues occurring in these lists now. We also need to list map again just to flatten each sublist. So we're going to take all of those sublists and just run a flatten as a map command. That way we retain each sublist, but we flatten their contents. There you go. So you'll see we have a list for each one. And really we want to find the index of true. So we're going to do index of. And in each list, we want to have that index of false. Of true, sorry. Okay. So when we run this, we should expect each. Uh, we may need to work at level one. maybe there we go so these basically represent the index of the wall in this original list of all wall elements that will be the host for that respective fill so what we want to do is run a get item at index and we want to feed that index through from this list of elements and once we run that out, we should get basically the respective host of each of those fills. So we can go back and get the point as well of each of those. So you can see we have 14 points, 14 hosts, and then all we need is a family type. So a little bit of a convoluted workflow to get there. Um, but you can see how I've had to deal with a lot of list management techniques in order to reach this point. Um, especially the lacing at the end, that, that, that was, I'm sorry, the lacing, the levels, that was quite notable. Even I had to figure that one out as I went to, so I could work at level two of this list. 
So you can see I was trying to work at, at this level. Yep. Okay, so now all we need to do is go get that springs node that I showed you before. Hosted instance by points. And if I just scroll over here, so basically we want to feed in our hosts. We want to feed in our points and then we want to feed in our family. So in this case, we're going to do, uh, I think we're doing our doors first. I'll just double check if it was doors or windows. It was doors. Okay. And I don't think I need to do this, but just to be on the safe side, I'm going to make a list of repeated items and I'm just going to take accounts of the number of hosts that we're dealing with. And I'm just going to repeat our door just so our, our list is operating with an equal number of elements. I don't think I have to do that, but just being on the safe side. Okay, so ultimately this should create a door in each of those walls. It's important to be back in the right active view. So we're just going to go back to our active view. And if we run this, we should expect it to work, hopefully. There you go. So you can see that each of those generated a door. Um, quite powerful and, and pretty cool. Um, obviously the door handing and swing direction isn't considered in the script. Um, you would need to probably build more intelligence into the blocks for it to understand that. But pretty cool. And then if we want to do the windows, it's just a simpler matter of going back and picking the different field region type and going right to the end. And because the spring node actually deals with just um, literally looking at an element to place, we can also do the window instead. And we should expect that this should also work. So we run that. It's a bit hard to tell if it worked. And it worked. Um, obviously the sill height isn't correct at the moment. Um, it looks like it's not cutting the wall because the sill height wasn't correct. So we could also set up a set parameter by name and set the sill height to say like 600 each um, as part of the script. But that at least lets them cut the cut the wall as well. So there you go. So um, pretty, pretty cool. Um, just a demonstration of how you can automate the creation of geometry and families in Revit. So there you, there you go. Uh, the house that Dynamo built. So pretty cool. Um, so if you need any more help, uh, feel free to consult the primer or the forums, um, and we'll do another demonstration after this one just to deal with placing family instances and setting their parameters as well, just for a bit of reinforcement. So hopefully I'll see you in the next demonstration, and also in the tutorials after that one. If there's any comments or feedback, feel free to leave them down below, and if you enjoy what you're seeing, feel free to follow and subscribe, um, and I'll see you in the next lesson. Thanks. Take care. Bye.